This is chapter five, the clinical features of the gingiva. We're gonna talk about how the gingiva should look in health. Healthy tissue should be free of inflammation. It has not been altered by disease or trauma, and it does not bleed when probing. Tissue color. The tissue color in health should be pink and or pigmented. There are variations in light pink and dark pink, but overall it should be pink or it could be pigmented. Um, healthy attached gingiva should be firmly, firmly bond to the underlying cementum and bone, and it should be what we call resilient, meaning it should spring back if it's gently press, pressed on. So if you took your probe and you laid it sideways and you pressed on the gingiva, it should spring back right away. So there shouldn't be any residual indentation of the probe. And if you blow air on it, it shouldn't, um, it should stay nice and tight and firm. Um, texture for healthy gingiva should be stippled and firm. Um, it may or may not be stippled, but it should be firm and it should be have that pink color. And this is a picture of what stippling looks like. It looks kind of orange peely. Sometimes you have to take your air and dry it to see that stippling, and other times you can just see it. Um, healthy tissue margin should be coronal to the CEJ. So the free gingival margin um, should be coronal, uh, meaning higher on the tooth to the CEJ or closer to the edge of the tooth. This is a picture of what healthy gingiva should look like in the posterior sextant. Um, there's variations. Usually tissue can be a little bit lighter in the anterior than in the posterior, but should still be pink, um, could still have stippling, should be firm. You can press it with your probe and have it bounce right back. The tissue contour meaning size and shape of the tissue, it should lie snugly around the tooth or firm against the bone. Um, it should have that nice even scalloped look like the McDonald's arches. Um, it, it should um, be knife-like or pointed on the inner dental papilla. So in other words, it should come to an exact point, but keeping in mind that if teeth don't contact each other, like in that lower picture, it's gonna be blunted or flat. Um, when you're describing healthy gingiva or doing your gingival description in your clinical notes, you should describe it as by color, contour, consistency, and texture, and then use the term generalized or localized to describe it. So an example would be generalized pink, firm, stippled, fits snugly around the tooth with knife-like papilla, or you could say flat papilla. Now we're going to talk about gingivitis. Gingivitis um, is a form of periodontal disease. It's brought on usually by plaque biofilm or the presence of plaque biofilm and the response or the host's immune response. So there, there's plaque ir irritation and then your tissue responds to it. It's an inflammatory response to the bacteria and it results in clinical changes. It, and the changes involve the free and or attached gingiva and or interdental papilla but it does not include any of the other structures of the periodontium. Acute gingivitis has a short duration. Chronic may exist for years. You can have local factors that play a role in gingivitis, such as orthodontic bands. Um, other examples would be uh, crown margins. Um, you could have rotated teeth. You could have calculus present. Anything that's going to help retain um, plaque against the tooth or make um, oral hygiene procedures difficult could would be a local factor. Gingivitis is an inflammation of the gingiva causing tissue changes. Color, the color will change from pink to red. And there's a nice chart on page 90 that will kind of outline this for you. And this is a picture of early gingivitis. You can see some slight marginal redness. And then we've got changes in the um, tissue contour or the size and the shape. Edema, which is um, swelling, is increased tissue fluid and it makes the gingival margin or the interdental papilla bigger. In other words, it's what creates those false pockets or those pseudo pockets. It takes the gum tissue from being flat like this against the tooth to being bulbous around a tooth. Um, tissue contour. So you can have marginal and papillary redness. You can have, um, you can lose the scalloped, nice scalloped appearance if you have a lot of redness, such as on the um, picture on the right. 
This is a picture of slight marginal and papillary redness. This is a picture of some fiery red marginal gingiva and papilla, and as aggravated and horrible as that tissue might look to you, um, it is still just gingivitis. It's still localized um, to the areas, the gingival tissue, and not any of the surrounding periodontal structures. These are some pictures of changes in shape of the papilla. So you can describe the papilla as being bulbous or enlarged or like appear to bulge out. You can um, have blunted papilla where they're flat and they don't fill the inner dental spaces. So if you use the term blunted papilla, we would know that that means the papilla are not filling the inner dental spaces. Or you can have cratered. Cratered is more of a description for um, an active, um, more active disease state such as like NUG, and we're going to talk about NUG later on. Consistency changes. Inflammation causes an increased fluid in the tissue. The tissue becomes what we say is spongy. So if you were to have your tooth and you lay your probe against the tooth, instead of that probe mark disappearing or the tissue bouncing right back, the um, inflammation would leave the indentation of the probe on the tissue. Um, you, it, it feels squishy. It's like pressing on a sponge. Um, it deflects when air is blown into the sulcus. So if you took your air water syringe and you blew at the sulcus, it would kind of flap loosely. Um, texture, increased fluid um, in the area of inflammation gives tissue a smooth, shiny appearance, or in other words, a loss of stippling. Um, if you blow air on the tissue when it's healthy, you'll see it, the stippling or you'll at least see like a flat matte finish. When you blow air on inflammation, it appears shiny and smooth. Um, the position of the margin changes. So the margin moves more coronally or above the CEJ to, to, due to the swelling. So in other words, the um, tissue appears higher up on the tooth. And the inside lining of the sulcus, that gum tissue that um, where you stick your probe, that tissue on the inside of the sulcus becomes ulcerated. And when it becomes ulcerated, the blood vessels are swollen and they become much more easily disrupted when you stick your probe in there. In other words, you get bleeding on probing. And this slide shows you a picture of inflammation in the pocket or and um, bleeding on probing. Bleeding is an important indicator of inflammation because that sulcus becomes irritated and ulcerated. And when you poke your probe in there, it bleeds easily. So the extent of inflammation can be localized or confined to a single tooth or a few teeth. It can be generalized, covering most of the mouth. Um, the general rule of thumb is that if, if it affects less than 30% of the mouth, it's lo localized. If it affects more than 30% of the mouth, it's generalized. It can just be papillary, so just the interdental papilla are inflamed. It could be marginal, where it affects the papilla and the gingival margin, or it can be what we call diffuse. So it goes from the papilla to the margin, and then all the way up to the mucogingival junction, affecting all of the attached gingiva as well. This is a picture of diffuse inflammation. So diffuse inflammation you can see affects the papilla, the gingival margin, and it, the attached gingiva is also red. But if you look more toward the back areas, it's more pink and healthy looking. That's why it's localized. In this picture, it's generalized. And as angry and inflamed as that tissue might be, it is still just lo localized to the um, gingival tissues. It, it does not affect the periodontal structures. You can have localized marginal inflammation or diffuse inflammation, and that looks painful. So those are the terms you're going to use to you do your gingival description. 